What's going on, Hobby Lobby? It's your boy, Javier, Javier, with the Javier, Javier show. Make sure you say it twice. Got a new little setting that I'm doing. I thought it'd be better to just sit down and have a conversation instead of just screaming out into the camera. Uh, I wanted to make this video about why I am not a liberal. And I thought it would be very important to have this discussion because I'm going to get a little personal. But also, I want to tell you why I did become conservative. So, um, before I get into that, I do want to tell you, um, shouts out to all my subscribers. You are the best. I appreciate you liking the videos, sharing the videos, and even subscribing to the channel and taking the time to hear what I got to say. I made this channel so that, you know, people just like me can get their voices heard, you know, to try to create a conversation. Maybe some of the conversations that's not being had in the mainstream media or, you know, on the political stage. So I thought it'd be very important to find unique voices and amplify them. And I do this not just for me, but I do this for you um, because I think it's very important that these worldviews that we hold um, are expressed and people can see a different side of it than just what they see on the television. It's an uphill battle because, you know, I'm a black person in America and I am conservative and I know that my voice is not always received very well. Um, and I know I think that I may say things that are controversial at times, but I think it's very important that we have that dialogue. Um, so this video is about why I'm not a liberal. I don't see liberals as my enemies. Um, I don't see liberals all in the same light. There are different types of liberals, and I don't see them as the Democrat Party in whole, just like I don't see every conservative as a Republican. Now, I'm going to take a journey back to my childhood because it's very important that we put this in context. Um, you know, growing up in the projects, um, politics was not a thing that many people spoke about or talked about. I think it, it, we kind of lived in our own bubble, to put it in um, simple terms, because, you know, we saw day to day, you know, especially being a kid, you go to school, you come back home, you do your homework, you go out into the streets and you play with your friends until you grow up. And next thing you know, you're getting involved in a whole lot of craziness. Um, my brother, um, he went to prison when I was 12 years old, my older brother. And at that moment, I felt compelled to step up and to be, be a man. And in that context, you actually become your worst nightmare because you start doing things what you consider to be a man. And it really is, it's really not what you think it is. But a little bit about myself is my nature is I'm a fanatic. Um, it's always been that way with everything that I've done. So when it came to being a gangster, when it came to actually being in the streets, I wanted to be the best of the best. And that's what I reached for. Um, I was heavily involved with Christianity since I was a kid because the church van used to come around the neighborhood, pick up the kids and take them to church and give them Bibles. And I thought it was pretty dope. I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I'm very young at this point. Um, even before my brother went to prison, I was into Christianity. I remember trying to push Christianity on my friends and they would just, you know, dismiss me and, you know, thought I was losing my mind. But I was really into it. I wanted to understand. And at the same time, I was trying to reconcile those two differences at the same time while I was actually, you know, in the streets doing, you know, who knows what. And there are a lot of stories that I can get into. And I'm pretty sure they'll come out in the future as I make more videos or speak to more people. Um, that I really don't go into because some of the things that I'm still coping with, some of these things that I keep personal because it drives me, but you know, I don't feel like you should let everybody in, um, at least too fast before they get to know you. Um, but I, politics wasn't on our radar to get back to the point. And what really was taking place is the fact that you know, I ended up going to juvenile when I was 15 years old for armed robbery charge um, and a few other things. Um, and I ended up facing 10 to 20 years in prison. Now, at the time, you know, 
being 15 years old, I didn't know anything about politics. The most that I knew was that a lot of black adults were telling me that we were going to have the first black president, which was Barack Obama. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, if we get a black man as president, then he'll get me out of juvenile. I mean, I'm a kid. I don't know no better at the moment. Um, that's the most that I ever thought about politics on that level. And, you know, fast forward a little bit, you know, I'm learning about Christianity and religion became a big thing for me. Like religion was, you know, it consumed me and I was still doing gangster stuff while I was locked up. And, you know, I was no angel. I can tell you that, but I somehow found a way to marry the two and I justified it and made me feel like God had a plan for my life. And it was my duty to fight and survive. It was my duty to be the biggest and the baddest in order to, you know, survive the environment I was in so that I could, you know, fulfill my purpose. And it must have been a test that I had to pass in order to be who I was going to become. You know, so I got so involved in um, religion to the point where I was learning from a theologian while I was still locked up, um, the chaplain, and he was teaching me the differences between Christianity and other religions. He was giving me the context of the times the books were written, helping me with translations um, on what stuff meant and how it was mistranslated or how different translations of each Bible, you know. And as I went down that rabbit hole, the more and more that I studied it, you know, the more it didn't make sense to me, the more that I just I couldn't reconcile what I had thought with what the reality was, at least in my mind. Now, this video is not about atheism. It's not about religion. It's it's simply just giving you the context on how I got to politics and why I'm not a liberal. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Help, you know, help me, you know, get my voice heard because I'm doing this for those people out there who need some semblance of sanity in these conversations. Somebody to, you know, bring conservatism in the light that may not be represented in our world and society today. Um, but to get back to it, uh, I ended up becoming an atheist. Um, I didn't know what atheism was. I just remember doubting the Bible, and I was trying to save my faith. I was trying to understand why I was feeling the way I was feeling, why things wasn't making sense to me. I started reaching out to, you know, pastors, preachers, and people of that sort of caliber, trying to get an understanding of religion. Um, I ended up going to this church, and one thing led to another. It was a fanatic church, and it was very cult-like. And that was the last straw for me where I decided, okay, I can't learn from a pastor or a preacher. I'm going to have to go elsewhere and try to figure out this God thing. I started watching debates. I started getting into, you know, different writers about religion and trying to, you know, save my faith. So I ended up learning about atheism and what it meant and what it stood for. And I had to come to the realization that I was an atheist. And, it, and it's in all things, I'm a fanatic, so... I got really heavy into atheism. I became an anti-theist, and I started going around um, debating pastors and preachers about these topics, even getting banned from churches or whatnot. So I've always been an individualistic kind of person, so I wasn't really involved with atheist groups or trying to, you know, get involved in that manner. It was just like a one-man army with me. Um, long story short, I started talking to other atheists, and the liberalism came up. And that's when the politics started clicking in my head. The liberals started making claims about, you know, black people being victims and as a society, they owed a debt to black people. I remember the liberals telling me that I personally was a victim because of what I've been through, because of what my ancestors have been through. And the story went from that to just, you know, you name it. And these were things that I just could not relate to. And this goes back to me being a kid and being a gangster and um, just being locked up and realizing at some point that I had to take ownership of my own life, that I had to be an individual. You know, the word racism came up a lot from the liberals trying to explain racism. And I just remember that I feared more black people than I feared white people. Because I grew up in a neighborhood where majority of the people I was surrounded was black. I was surrounded by mostly black people. And these were people that I was seeking to harm and 
who were seeking to harm me. And I grew up not really thinking about white people for the most part. You know, I knew white people, you know, we made jokes about people speaking proper. And if you go back and watch my video that I did, um, Not So Black and White, um, The Black and White Dilemma, I talk about a story from my childhood on how we picked on this kid who was actually, you know, speaking proper and dressing um, with his pants up on his waist. And we just, you know, treated him horribly. And he ended up growing up to be uh, a gangster. And I always thought about the impact that we had on him. But, you know, there was a moment in my life where I had to take complete ownership of my life. And I saw myself as an individual. And I thought that if there was going to be a way for me to survive, that I had to take personal responsibility for myself to improve myself and to work as hard as I could to be a better person in society. Um, this is before the politics, though. And the liberal concept just wasn't clicking with me. It, it wasn't making sense to me because I felt ownership for my life and I wasn't responsible for what other people had done. And I didn't want to put my destiny in other people's hands. So this is kind of how politics got introduced to me. And the liberal ideas and concepts just wasn't clicking in my head. Um, I started looking into the values of um, conservatism and started trying to understand, okay, what's the flip side? How horrible is the other side since I'm being told all of this? And I started getting into, you know, the individual aspect of conservatism, which I already resonated with. I got into the family structure, which is something that really impacted me heavily because I had a father who was in my life. And though my father and mother had got divorced, they, you know, my dad was always there for me. He was buying Christmas presents, back to school clothes. My mom and him did their best to work together. And even though I fell through the cracks and still did horrible things in my life and ended up going to juvenile, you know, a lot of the messages that my dad was teaching me as a kid started coming back to me. And the security and the structure that he was setting up in place, you know, it was just things that I was learning that my friends in the neighborhood just had no access to. Some of them had no fathers at all. And some who had fathers were horrible fathers. And... I remember, even to this day, I have friends who tell me they wish they had a dad. Things would be so much different and so much better. Somebody to teach them all the lessons they learned. You know, so I understood the value of having a father in the home. And as I was looking into conservatism, I heard especially other black conservatives talking about black fathers in the home and how it impacted us as a community. So... You know, that started making sense. And I'm not even on the policy level right now. I'm just simply on a conservative mindset and what conservatives actually believe. Um, as you know, like I spoke about me being an atheist, it wasn't about me being um, um, conservative. It was just, here I am an atheist, and most atheists are liberals. And I just was like, how is conservatism, you know, touching me in such a way? And it it led from that, and then I started, you know, Donald Trump came into the, the scene, and Donald Trump brought politics to a for, forefront that it hasn't been in a long time. And more people started thinking about politics that had never thought about politics before, because Donald Trump made entertainment out of it. He, he glamorized the political landscape and allowed people to be interested. And you can criticize Donald Trump all you want. This is not about Donald Trump. But I'm just telling you that it was something that I noticed about him that I really appreciated because I thought these issues were important. Um, so I appreciate more and more people getting involved and in talking about politics. Hopefully it's healthy. Um, but that's when I started looking into the policies and what actual the Republicans versus the Democrats. I started seeing, you know, the history behind conservatism and behind liberalism you know, the 60s and welfare state, the war on poverty, all of these different things that just started clicking in my head. And I started trying to wrestle with them. And because I'm not somebody who was deeply into politics or has a political family, I had to start learning these things on my own for the most part. So I started reading, reading, reading. You know, I started learning, learning, learning. You know, Thomas Sowell. I started um, seeing Larry Elder. I started listening to, you know, Ben Shapiro, Sam Harris. Um, I started just watching liberals and conservatives and just trying to put it all together. So I decided, you know, I'm going to pick five people that I can reliably, reliably listen to and get a perspective on all of these issues. Some were liberal, some were um, conservative. 
And I wasn't really focused on party. I was focused on the ideas of it all. I'm more of an abstract thinker. I like to think in concepts. So conservatism really became the way for me um, on a personal level. You know, I speak on a personal level more than a political level in my perspective because I think that's more important. And the reason that I started looking into policies and what politicians were saying in the parties is because I wanted to know how these values were being implemented on the world stage and how were they helping improve other people's lives. And then that's when everything just exploded. You know, I entered into a whole new world with people from all different backgrounds and different opinions. And I realized we are all not the same. We're all not a monolith. Um, I did find problems with the black community voting overwhelmingly for Democrats. And I wrestled with that. So I started making videos. I started the Javier Javier show to start having these conversations with people because I want to understand politics more. I want people to understand conservatism more. I'm learning as well. But, you know, I do come at it from a unique perspective, and I think that's what a lot of people like about me is I'm open-minded enough to consider all different points of views and also using my conservative values to frame it in a way that we can best understand and move forward. So, you know, that's pretty much why I'm not a liberal and why I am conservative. So if you made it this far, thank you so much um, for listening. Um, Especially if you new and this is your first time to the Hobby Lobby, please join, you know, hit that subscribe button, like this video, share it. It means a lot, not just to me, but to the other people out there who are trying to make sense of it all. And I want to be a voice, not, I don't want to be a talking head. I don't want to be somebody who's another, you know, conservative pundit. I want to be somebody who's on a cultural level having these conversations and trying to bring them in perspective. And if I am wrong on something, that's fine because I can always correct my position because there's always more to learn. And if somebody else is wrong on something, I expect them to be open-minded and have a conversation with me. And so subscribe if you're new to the channel, you know, like this, share this video, like I said, and, you know, I look forward to speaking with you more and, you know, as always, stay safe out there with the coronavirus and appreciate you watching. If you like this video and you like the me sitting down having a conversation, let me know in the comments below. And, you know, maybe I can do more of these. Um, if you don't like it, then maybe I'll stick to my original platform. But either way, you know, say it twice. Till next time, folks. Mwah.